Welcome ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. We're here to talk about Mjolnir, that's right, Thor's hammer, being a woman. I know, I never thought I would say the day, but yes, that's uh, that's what we're talking about today. Um, look, there's a wider discussion to be had here, and it is about the MCU, uh, not the MCU, sorry, the MCU, and how they're just changing everything, literally everything gets changed. Uh, for a feminine slant. And look, I love women, right? I love women more than the next man, generally speaking. Um, but this sort of like incessant desire to continuously strip any masculinity from comic books and superheroes, what are they hoping to achieve? Like, what's the predominant, you know, reader base? You know, what what is it? It's men. So why? You know, and the thing is, right, this could have been an interesting concept, if it wasn't for everything else. And, and that was similarly how I sort of reported on a video yesterday about how the 355 bombed. New movie, you probably never even heard of it. But it was a movie that just wasn't on anyone's radar because it's a dime a dozen now. It's just, that's everything that's out there. So let's take a look at this because this is just fascinating and the decisions behind it, again, are just absolutely fascinating. <sighs> and like, you know, <coughs> whether this, uh, sorry about that, whether this translates into... Um, you know the the movie universe or not? Who knows? But you know we do see them remove. You know moving some things over from the comic book universe. I mean we're already getting uh, you know female Thor Jane Foster, which was a terrible uh, you know viewership on that comic run. So why are they even doing that? No idea. Uh, Donny Cates and yeah, Marvel double down on retcon of Thor's Mjolnir, depicts it as a female energy being because we can't just have it as a you know, as a, as a, as a you know, as sort of mystical hammer, it now has to be uh, a femme energy being. Has to be. Why Why not? Why not? So Marvel Comics writer Donny Cates, alongside associate editors Caitlin Lindvet and Alana Smith, retconned Thor's famous Mjolnir in the latest issue of his run on Thor. And this is the thing, right? Like, this is part of the problem of... Uh, these these comics have been running for so long. How do you keep them fresh? Well, apparently this is how you keep it fresh. They're just running out of ideas. And here we have it, ladies and gents. So, you know, we've got Thor, God of Hammers, Part 2. Wow. What a... You know, I mean, that looks like Obelix and Asterix, doesn't it? The level of artwork. Not that that was bad. Just I'd expect a little bit more from Marvel. Uh, in Marvel Comics, Thor... Wielding his hammer, debuted in Journey into Mystery 83 back in 1962. <clears throat> and in that issue written by Stan Lee and Larry Lieber, with art by Don Heck, Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko, Dr. Donald Blake is transformed into Thor after he discovered an ancient cane. He discovered the cane after fleeing a cave following his discovery of the arrival of a number of alien rock creatures. The cane transforms into Mjolnir and then transforms him into Thor. As we can see here. The cave is bathed in blinding light, like a fiery bolt of lightning, and the ancient cane, it, it's changing shape, and I'm changing too. Can this be really happening, or am I going mad? No, it isn't mad. I can feel my body bursting with power, power such as I've never known. The cane, it has become a mighty hammer, and I have been transformed into, into, wait... There are words inscribed on the hammer. The inscription on the hammer read, Whoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. And then, yeah, that was Thor and Mjolnir. So, uh, in Thor Annual 11 by Alan Zelenitz, uh, Mjolnir is commissioned by Odin as one of three treasures to be finer than Odin's spear, Gungnir. Uh, one of the dwarves tells Odin, now by your leave, a gift unlike any in all the realm, the hammer Mjolnir, forged of mystic Uru metal. It is a unique, I think that's what it's supposed to say, weapon of matchless strength, my lord, and invulnerable to destruction. Uh, and then Odin uh, does some enchantments on, that, on the hammer. So, you know, to Mjolnir, natural properties, I shall add my own divine enchantment, which now apparently is a woman. Odd. Uh, henceforth, no one shall be able to wield this hammer lest he be worthy, and ever shall this mallet to return to the hands of him who hurls it. And ever shall the thunderous storm and the very elements on high 
respond to Mjolnir's summons. So pretty cool. Like that's that's badass, right? You know, we're all familiar with this stuff. <clears throat> uh, and then you know, and it has gone through several changes. You know, the origin would be slightly altered in 2004. So the book would then state that Odin sought out the great dwarf craftsman uh, Eitri uh, to make the hammer. Mjolnir Eitri used the heart of a son to forge a mold with which he birthed Mjolnir, uh, greatest weapon of all time. His creation is a work blessed with magic, blessed by the Odin power. You know, again, we saw part of this. Um, what was an end game? Uh, but it was it was a stormbreaker, wasn't it? <clears throat> uh, so cool, fine. Sure, like, subtle changes, subtle, but still relatively in keeping. Um, and then, you know, changed again. You know, the history along with the Hammer's original inscription would be altered by Jason Aaron when he turned Jane Foster into Thor. First, the Hammer's inscription was changed. Aaron changed it to read, whoever holds this power, if she be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. Because, you know, why wouldn't you do that? But that's because a woman picked it up. Um... And then we get this, so this individual would continue again, changing it again. So there was a Lord High Librarian said, uh, Many different tales have been told about how the hammer of yours came to be. Some say Odin had it forged as a gift for his young son. Others say the All-Father wielded uh, himself many centuries before Thor was even born. The tales always mention the Dwarven forges and the mystical enhancements and unbreakable Uru, but one very important element of the hammer story has been forgotten. Uh, the storm. There you go. The storm is it, ladies and gents. Uh, the book then tells of a battle between Odin and the god Tempest, the mother of thunder. Which is sort of alright, I guess. Described as a sentient superstorm. Eventually, Odin defeats the storm and then would trap it. I mean, that's, that's a bit lame. Uh, after trapping the being in the stone. And again, remember, this is, a, this, is this was not a popular run, just as an FYI. Remember, that wasn't popular. So Odin trapped the being in the stone, and then he tasked the dwarves to craft him a weapon, which they do. Upon attempting to take up the weapon, the storm takes Odin for a ride, almost destroying all of Asgard. And in order to safeguard the weapon, Odin placed en enchantments on it. Um, <clears throat> and then, ladies and gents, now we've got this. Now in Donny Cates' the most recent issue of Thor, Thor 20, it's revealed that the storm is still alive. And it's now calling itself... The God of Hammers. As well as Mjolnir. Uh, and it can hold itself. The Hammer has spoken. I am Mjolnir. I mean, this is just lame, isn't it? It's like fan fiction. No, like, seriously? Seriously? Not only does it take on the shape of a woman, but it's also been going across the stars, destroying everything in its path, including uh, Niedervelle, uh, Jotunheim, and the town of Broxton. <clears throat> and you can say, I just, honestly, it's just, I mean, it's just fan fiction. Look at this. Oh, how lame is this? And they, like, Marvel, are you really out of that many ideas that you've got to consistently change the origin? We're just going to keep changing it. And then we're going to continue on from something which wasn't well liked, remember. Barely anyone what, uh, read The Mighty Thor. You know, Jane Foster Thor. It's just so out of ideas, so out of touch. And it's just everything. Like, you know, if, if I said to you, oh, guys, ladies and gents, I should have started this. Ladies and gents, they've started off, um, they've given Thor's hammer uh, a sentient presence. Can you guess what it is? Everyone would have gone, well, it's got to be a woman, isn't it? Like, you just go, of course. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? Because, again, of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? There's, everything is now. Ah, oh, good lord. So I'd love to hear any and all of your thoughts on this. Because I just, I just clown world stuff. It really is. Which, if you want to buy yourself a clown world t-shirt, underneath the video. Thank you very much. Uh, on my Teespring store. But anyway, it's super lame. It's to be expected. And this is why Marvel Comics are dying. And they are dying. Um, it, like, even, even Marvel Comics Alien, like, for God's sake, like, that has been... I, I don't know when the next one's coming out for that. I've been trying to review that. They've been months between issues. Months. Dying a slow, burning death. So, but anyway, let me know what you think down below. If you're new here, do hit subscribe. Turn your bell notifications on to all. Check out my second channel. It's in the description box. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. 
at Mr. Reviews. Links to all of that is in the description box. Thanks so much, ladies and gents. Have a great Tuesday. Bye-bye.